Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I am Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And this is episode 240. 240. What are we talking about today? This is Escaping Twin Flames. Cool. So this is actually yes, a review say, of the Netflix series that I had heard about this series a while ago, but I don't know. It like didn't really... Like, you know, make me want to watch it. Mm. But then we were looking for something to watch and thought, oh, give it a try. And I was shocked. We both were shocked at what we heard. So we thought we should talk about it. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. But before we do that, shall we talk about anything from last week? Yeah. Last week we did Conscious Living. And I don't know about you, but I've tried to make a few changes this week. Because, you know, baby steps. You can't change everything all at once. Yeah. But, like, I've tried to add more fruit into my diet and stuff. And, you know, just different things to be more conscious about what I'm putting in my body. But, you know, other stuff as well. So Cool. Yeah. Uh, and th- we had some listeners that said the same thing. So congratulations to everybody that worked on that. Nice. I had an interesting question that was asked to me this week by a client. And so I wanted to talk about this real quick before we go into the review of Escaping Twin Flames. This is from Juanita. She said, so I've heard in some places where our pets absorb our illness and take them on. My sweet dog passed away recently from a liver disease. I did a reading for her with you a couple of weeks back. Is there a possibility she picked that up from me so I didn't have to have the liver disease? So this is not something I've ever heard of before. Um, I don't believe that this is how this works at all. I think what happens is, just like with anything in our lives, is that our energy is contagious and that if we are sick, our dogs might sometimes feel some of that, or they might imitate some of that. Like, I don't know if you've seen, there's videos that have gone around, like on TikTok and stuff, of dogs that are limping Mm. because their owners are limping. Like, they don't even have a reason to limp. They're just limping. Yeah. In paths. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) To the max. But I definitely don't believe that, like, this woman was going to have liver issues, but instead of her having them, that her dog had them instead. You know, that's what she was asking. Uh-huh. So I don't think that that's the case. I don't yeah. think that's how that works. Um, you know, we all have our own life cycle that we have to go through. And I think when you get into grief, we look for reasons for things to have happened yeah. instead of it just being that, well, this body can only live so long. Yeah. But I think, especially with like something like liver disease or kidney failure or whatever, that people want to blame themselves. And it's yeah, not your fault. Yeah, I mean, unless you're feeding the dog like terrible food, you know, or like I, I could see the dog, like let's say you live in an extremely volatile environment and the dog's constantly yeah. stressed out yeah. and maybe getting abused. Right. I could see the dog maybe getting sick as a result of its own stress. Yes. You know, and stuff like that. But a liver sound, that's, yeah, that doesn't sound so stress related. That sounds, you know, I don't know really what, but I, my first thought was diet, you know, I don't know. Medications. There's a lot of things. Right. Medications. But uh, I don't really believe that. No. Unfortunately, Juanita, I don't think that's the case that, you know, because then we could, I think we could apply that then to everything. Yeah. Which isn't. I don't think that's how it works. So that would mean like, you know, you're going to get a cancer that I was supposed to get. Right. Right. Totally. Yeah. So I didn't have to get it. Right. No, I think that we can all get our own types of illnesses um, for a number of reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And that could be, you know, how you talk to yourself, how you what you put in your body, um, how you take care of yourself. Yeah. That, that's just how it happens. And then sometimes you see the fittest of fit. Yeah. Right? That yep. are the most health conscious type of people and they get it. So Absolutely. I don't know. Can we really at this point explain where does it come from and how does it and why? I don't really know. I don't yeah, think so. Probably not. I think a lot of it, if you ask me, is about the road that we cho- chose when we came here. The path that we chose, yeah. our soul contract. Like this is all kind of mapped out for us. Predetermined. Yeah. yeah. So... 
Uh, I think if you're, if you're supposed to have liver disease, you will. Um, and your dog won't take that from you. That's just, you know, they have their own issues. But I understand when you have an animal that passes and you're looking for an answer. Yeah. Um, and it, it, people do feel really, really guilty a lot of times. For, I should have fed better. I should have done this better or that better. And it's like, well, but you didn't know. Because if you did, right. you would have done better. So mm. don't beat yourself up for yeah. it. You know. And that life of, you know, your animal um, is going to go on and live many lives, too. So it's exactly. not like the only life they ever get. Exactly. Yep. So so thanks for that, Juanita. That was a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and then I just wanted to talk about, I have two classes this coming up this week. I have an animal communication class on Wednesday. Uh, what is the date? I don't know. I should look that up. Um, this coming Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. So that is the 21st of February. Cool. That's uh, Animal Communication 101. You can sign up for that on my website on scheduling. And then I'm also starting a meditation for beginners class and that's next Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And that's just a half hour class just to kind of um, teach basics of meditation to, awesome. to help people. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. So that's what I got going on. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. I guess I'll give my info. Well, Might as well. okay. So you can find me at Samantha Jones, psychic medium.com. I do have a TV show that airs every Monday at 2 PM Pacific time. And tomorrow my guest is my good friend and energy healer, Lee Gibson. So I'm excited to have her. Last on. week, Brandon Lee was very good. I enjoyed that one. Yeah. Too. Wasn't she good? She's yeah. really calming and like basic. Like I love it. I can mm -hmm. talk to her and I don't feel like she's talking over my head. You said that. Yes. Um, yeah. I Very think that, down to earth and yep. um, puts it in layman's terms, yep. which I appreciate that. I do too. So. Absolutely. And I know that the viewers do too. So yeah. Yep. And then for you, sir. Uh, for my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web at djonesartcollection for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And for my photography, um, uh, Instagram at D Jones 71 photography and my Etsy shop is <clears throat> D Jones photography 71. And Very that's good. all for me. Fabulous. Okay. Episode 240 escaping twin flames. So first let me read a little bit about what this is about. Yeah. And then we, we're, we get very passionate when we talk about this to each other, so I have no doubt that we will have plenty. This was to kind talk of a last-minute decision to do this because we had just watched it, and yeah. I think it struck us both very as like, "Whoa, yeah." I kind of want to talk about this. Uh, yeah, you know? me too. See if anybody else watched, the, you know, watched it. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, okay. So Escaping Twin Flames is a three-part Netflix series that pulls back the veil on Twin Flame Universe, a controversial online community that. Former members accused of preying on people looking for love. Twin Flame Universe offers classes that claim to help people find their perfect partner. However, Escaping Twin Flames tells disturbing stories about how the group manipulates members, including encouraging stalking and messing with gender identities. Yeah. The series also follows families trying to help their loved ones leave Twin Flames. Mm -hmm. The community was founded by Jeff and is it Shalia? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ayan, who claimed to have special spiritual powers to confirm their members' twin flames. They operate Twin Flame Twin Flame Universe from their home in Michigan. Mm. So, you know, when, when we first started watching this, I thought, how bad could this be? You know, there's, there's cults, right? Yeah. And there's bad religious type things, but it's very rare that you come across spiritual people that want to act this way yeah it's not very often because i feel like once you've had a spiritual awakening and you have that connection that most of the time you don't want to screw people over and you don't want to do bad things because you know that the karma is going to come back to you yeah you would think <laughs> yeah but this guy he started as an entrepreneur before he met shalia and so he was into starting businesses. And I don't remember. Do you remember what kind of businesses he had? I honestly don't. Yeah, I don't but either. But he did dabble a lot in a lot of, seemed like a lot of different types of things. Yeah. And then he met her. And she was into all of this. Spirituality. Yes, into right. all the spirituality, you know, claimed to have the connection and, and, and hear messages and receive downloads and all that stuff. So then I think what happened is he got this idea of this is a money-making idea. Well, they were kind of celebrating the fact that they had met. Yeah. Right? And they had this relationship that was successful. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and because he was an entrepreneur, you could see, you could kind of see in him his his wheels always spinning. Mm -hmm. That look kind of in his face. Um, that was my biggest question. I think was like how. Like, how premeditated mm -hmm. is this? How far does this go back? Because they seemed kind of free spirity, you know, when they first met um, and kind of on the same page mm -hmm. and, and genuinely, I think, attracted to each other and or in yeah. love with each other. They seemed that they way. They seemed that way, yeah. Um, but yes, I think that I kind of feel like that was his mind trying to take what she could do. Yeah. And say, we can make something out of this. Yeah. Because we'll just say that your messages, you know, you're clairvoyant. Right. So your messages are true. Right. Uh, it starts to get a little bit way more bizarre than all that, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> So let me read you a little bit more here of what I found online about this. Um, in the series Escaping Twin Flames, ex-members of Twin Flame Universe say that Jeff and Shalia targeted people seeking love using tactics like isolating them from friends and family and manipulating them. They convinced members that their true soulmates was within the group and claimed that they were the only ones who could confirm this had they had achieved harmonious union, which means that you found your twin flame. Right. But let's stop. If we yes. can pause there for a second. Yes. Before he was telling the group that their twin flame was a member of the group, he was not. Yes. He was telling them that your twin flame could be anybody. Yes, when they first started so that, yeah. So he had a couple people that were members of the TFU um, and telling them, don't give up. So one lady's divorced already from her husband. Yeah. And he's still telling her, don't give up. Yeah. So she's showing up to her husband's house with his new girlfriend or wife there. Mm -hmm. Very weird. Yeah. Then there was another young lady um, that he told her the same, don't give up, don't give up. Yeah. She ended up getting a restraining order put on her by the gentleman that she was not giving up on. Yeah. And ended up accidentally. Right. Who knows? Um, at the same location as him twice. Yeah. And was arrested. Yeah. So, and they were again telling her, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The law and all these restraining orders, it yeah. doesn't matter. It matters, yeah. Because that is your genuine, true twin flame and yeah. you're meant to be together. And they were saying it's not real. None of that's real. So let's stop if we can really quick and explain twin flame yes. to anybody that's listening right now that doesn't even know what the heck we're talking about. You know, the whole twin flame thing is very confusing mm -hmm. because it's kind of like synchronicities that when you look it up, some people say one thing and some say another. Right. So there are some spiritual people that believe that your twin flame is your, that your soul has evolved enough that it can split into two and become two people. And so there's half of you that's out there and you're the other half and you want to find that other half of you. Mm -hmm. Now, others don't believe that. They believe that your twin flame is like a soulmate, except there's only one. And that this is the person that is here to make you evolve. Okay. Basically. Let's pause real fast. Mm -hmm. My biggest question with that would be is so if your soul is advanced enough and splits in two, does it then take over another body? Because or is it have to go through the birth process? Because it seems like you'd be years behind. Or they would be years behind if that's the case. Or it jumps into another body and now that other half of your personality exists within that body. Well, I think what it means is that when you make this soul contract, that you make it to split. And when the soul's born, I don't really know. Yeah. Like, like if you and I were twin flames in that way <clears throat> and you were born ahead of me, okay. you know, I mean, it, it's. So that's one theory. That is what, one theory. Of yeah. what twin flame is. But that's not what Jeff and Shalia are saying no. at all. What they're saying is that there's one twin flame out there for you, which is like a soulmate. But the person you should spend your life with, right. essentially. That they are here specifically for you and you are here for them. And whatever you have to do to be with them is what you should do. Right. Twin flame relationships, whichever way you want to look at them, whether it's the same soul or not, are very, very complicated relationships. They're not for the weak at heart. 
when somebody, when you meet somebody and you have that instant chemistry with them, that does not mean that that person is your twin flame. No. But that's what, one of the things that they were kind of trying to push mm. is, oh, you felt that spark? You mm. felt that? Okay, well, then that's them. Like, there was one girl, Angie, who um, met this guy who was way out of her league, if I remember correctly, and she was pursuing him, mm -hmm. and he w and even tried to kiss him, and he was like, "I'm sorry, you know." This he said is... you're like a sister. Too. Yeah, I think he ended up coming out as gay, but either way, yeah. they kept telling her to to go after him, to go out. This is your twin flame. This is the yeah. only person on this planet that's meant for you. Now, how would that feel to you if you're desperate for love because that's really what this this whole thing boils down to with them really it does is that these are people that want love so badly that mm. they are willing to do whatever it takes to get it yeah so if you're in that place in your mind and some spiritual self-proclaimed guru is telling you that <laughs> you have to go after this person because they're your one true twin flame what are you going to do yeah now let's mention here that these people pay to be in this thing their classes their classes it also has become a quote-unquote religion because he wanted to not have to pay taxes on things yeah. and so he turned it into a church they also work for him yes yes so many of these people it is like a pyramid in a way yes um so it's tier based you know and there's people above you and people above them and yep. yada yada but, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely designed, uh, it's filed, uh, like you said, as a religion to avoid taxes. So he's got this religion mm -hmm. that is a nonprofit, and under that umbrella, I think it was something like five profitable yeah. companies yes. under that umbrella. Yes. He had the people working for him, so he would give them deals either on classes or... That's kind of how he he played a reverse psychology. Mm -hmm. with so often a lot of these people were working for free. And if they weren't, they were making some sort of income. Right. And that becomes a tool to use against them. Yes. I'm going to rip you of your job. Yes. Of your duties and, you know, whatever control you have going on here, um, which wasn't much. But, yeah. you know, I'm sure they felt like they had some input, something going on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he was threatening to take that away. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're making an income, that can be scary. If you're just trying to be a part of something and giving up your time for free, yeah. that can also be scary. Yeah. So he's playing a total mind effort on all these people. Yes. Yes. And like there was the girl, Is was it Keely? K-E-E-L-Y. I think. Yeah. Uh, she was a trainer. And so, mm -hmm. first of all, to be a trainer, you have to pay for your training courses. You have to go through the classes, through this whole system. The classes start at $333. They have, are trying to use synchronicity numbers, angel numbers to draw people mm -hmm. in. Like, oh, this is $333. It's meant to be. Yeah. Um, and then, like, their life purpose class, $3,333. <laughs> For a life purpose class. Oh, my gosh. And they show these classes. Yeah. You oh. know, it's just them in a Zoom. Yeah. Sitting in two chairs. Yeah. Sometimes there's a background. Sometimes there's not. Right. You know, it doesn't... Um, you can see an evolution happening between the two of these people during this... Yes. ...series. Um, it's very interesting. He seems to be able to change his look. His hair grows very quickly. Yeah. Um but then it gets stranger because they start talking about him resembling the Western idea of what Christ looks like. Yeah. Okay? Not the true identity of what Christ looks like. Yeah. None of us really know. But I think we're all used to seeing the Caucasian looking guy with yeah. the blue eyes and long hair <laughs> and the beard. Yeah. Okay, he does resemble that. Yeah, he does. So because he did, this started turning actually took he took advantage of it. Yeah, he did. And started saying he was Christ. Right. And I was like, Oh my God, yeah. you gotta be kidding me. Yep, absolutely. So he's... somewhere during this process now that he's come out as I'm essentially, you know, the second coming of Christ, now he's determined that your twin flame as it were does not exist without within 
outside, excuse me, of the group. It's within the group. Yes. So it was like you could see his, you could see where things weren't panning out exactly how he yep. planned. Yep. So he would make alterations mm -hmm. to his plan. He's very smart. And this was one because he didn't want to lose the clientele. Yes. He didn't plan ahead real well. No. Like, when you're lying and scheming, it's kind of hard because you don't know where it's going to go, right? right? But that's exactly what he was doing here. He was preying on mostly women that are looking for love. And so, like, that one lady that I was talking about, Angie, that was chasing the guy that was gay, it's like it's never going to happen. So in order to keep these people, what do you do next? Mm -hmm. Well... You come up with another lie, which yeah. is, yeah, I got this wrong. Now the person has to be within here, right. right? So he can keep going and keep going and keep the people in. And, you know, something that I noticed, too, I don't think that they kick people out. Did you notice that? Like, I, I, I feel like people, when they leave, they leave. Mm -hmm. that, that Jeff and Shalia don't kick people out, which tells you right there that it's not about their like morals values or anything it's about money that yes. they'll they want to keep everybody around oh yeah because they're paying something yep. or you're at least contributing something you know and they're showing through this the mini series the amount of money that these people are spending the house they live in the the clothes that they're wearing the Gucci's name brands and mm -hmm. chanel and porsches and yep the house is huge yep Yet the people that work for them aren't receiving that type of income and they're aren't struggling. Living, they're struggling. Living yeah. with their parents, some of them. Yeah. And because this was kind of like a multi-level marketing thing, like that girl, Keely, she has to keep those people underneath her to make money. Mm -hmm. she, and so to do that, she kind of has to keep them happy. Yep. And that's not easy to do at all. She brought her own, own sister into this fold. Or cult or group or whatever you want to call it. And to the point where her sister got sucked in heavily. And um, the what they did with Keely to convince her was basically turned her into the next version of this Jeff and Shalia mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. They had their own network of we train couples on how to have successful relationships and long-lasting marriages and blah, blah, blah. So she is, she sold hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Now he has her do all his bidding. Mm -hmm. So when someone has to be scolded or told they need to go to this person, whether they wanted to be with that person or not, yeah. she's the one that had to do this. Yeah. She also brought her sister into it. Yeah. They forced her sister to be with a man that was what bipolar. Yeah, and he was much older than her. Yeah, was he was like really thirteen bad. years older. Mm -hmm. um, you could see clearly, but she wouldn't say anything yeah. out of fear of being disowned or whatever. Yeah. You know the control they had in the mind, but you could see clearly that the sister was not happy. Yeah, at all. Um, yeah, but was forced to have to try to say. Yes, this is the life I always dreamed of. The, the, exactly. They put her on a stage and they, they basically said that. Can you believe that you're living the life that you've always wanted to live? And you could see this sweet 19-year-old girl sitting there going, well, that's not what's going on. But what do I say? Because I right. can't sit here on this stage and go, I'm not. No. So all she said was, I'm grateful for everything I have. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And almost started crying if she did yeah. start crying. Yeah. So they follow a couple different, many people in this story. Yeah. Um, another one is an identical twin yeah. uh, lady who her sister got heavily involved and wrote them off. Yeah. And still to this day will not communicate with yeah. her. Identical twins is a very strong bond. Yes. I'm very surprised about that one. And so I'm really shocked that this lady has stuck to her guns yeah. about it. Um, the poor mom, you know, watching the mom of this situation and the identical twins being split up, mm -hmm. uh, it's heartbreaking. I was just like, man. Yeah. Um, they reach out to her, write her letters, and she responds with, uh, I can't be in your life. I can't give you what you want. Yeah. Please don't contact me. You're just like, whoa. Yeah, Jeff and Shalia, they teach you that they're your family. Mm -hmm. You don't need the people on the outside that don't yes. want you to do this. It's it's all manipulation. Yes. And you could see as it went on, as time went on, he started becoming more and His more manipulative. Yeah. 
And the relationship with Shalia, you could tell it was taking on some different types of things. And it started getting worse as far as the things that he was telling his members or whatever. Like basically with the male members, it was your wife is here for you and you will have sex with her whenever you want. And the your wife will basically just let you. And he even talked about how he basically raped his own wife, mm -hmm. you know, that, oh, and he's making fun of her sitting there going, oh, no, don't do it. And just talking about how he forced himself on her. And it's like, yeah. whoa. And the thing about all of that that bothered me is why do people allow themselves to be subjected to that? Why are there people sitting there going, this is what I want to be involved in? <laughs> and the answer is they're desperate for love. Love and money seem to be the mm. two most controlling factors in this world. And it's yeah. like, I don't know what it is that makes us think that like we have to have our true love here right now. And we have to find that. Like, I work with a lot of women that are like, I can't wait another month to find my soulmate. <sighs> I'm like, are you serious? Right. Like, I got a bad review from somebody because I told them that not gonna um, happen it's not going to happen in the next month. Yeah, like, yeah. that's not my fault. <laughs> you know? yes. But it's like, it, that's not how the universe works. No. The universe works in a way that it brings to you what it's supposed to at the time that it's supposed to. So these people that are forcing themselves into relationships because somebody else is telling them this is their twin flame. It got to the point where Jeff and Shalia started making the couples themselves. They started channeling, basic, saying they were they, channeling. Yeah, they said it was channeling. Yep. They said it was channeling that basically the universe was saying this person and this person are twin flames and they need to be together. But it gets even weirder than that. Mm -hmm. They decided that there were too many women and not enough men. Mm -hmm. And so some of the women needed to become men. Yep. I'm not joking. I wish no, I was. and he actually did classes on recognizing and um, admitting your divine masculinity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so he talked a lot about divine masculinity and divine femininity, okay? What these things are, let me tell you real quick so that you know. So divine feminine refers to qualities traditionally associated with femininity, such as nurturing, intuition, empathy, and creativity viewed as sacred and fa powerful aspects of existence. It's often seen as complementary to divine masculine, representing balance and harmony in the universe. Mm -hmm. Now, the divine masculine embodies qualities traditionally associated with masculinity such as strength, leadership, protection, and action, okay? Everybody possesses both divine feminine and divine masculine qualities mm -hmm. to some varying degree, regardless of the gender. Yep. The balance between these qualities varies from person to person. So some people, some women are more masculine and some are more feminine and same with men. And in that regard, just to interject something else, is that I've heard more than once from m multiple different sources is that we have both, we have two spiritual guides when we are born into this world. Mm -hmm. One is a female yes. and one is a male. And this is why. And that is to help us with each part of this. Yes. But basically what he was saying now was each couple needs to have a divine masculine and a divine feminine. And he was going to assign those roles <laughs> to the people. So this lady, Angie, that we were talking about before, mm -hmm. she is assigned to be the divine masculine. Right. And she starts trying to become a man. She starts cutting her hair and wearing male clothes. And then she's assigned to her, her twin flame who goes, no, I'm not gay. Nope, I'm mm -hmm. out. And you know what? That's the smartest decision mm -hmm. that anybody in that whole thing made was, are you kidding me? Oh, unreal. Yeah. Like, you. how do you force people to do that, right? But it goes deeper than that. Yeah. They had um, a trans woman, so um, a person that used to be a male and was now female, that was in their organization. And so they took... A girl and said okay you're gonna be the divine masculine and the trans woman is going to be the divine feminine right so somebody that had never thought about transitioning has now gone through the entire process mm -hmm. of transitioning to a male 
Yep. Because of this cult. That's where I was like, are you kidding me right now? They're still practicing. They're by still the way. practicing. Yeah. Yes, they are. They still are. And the the twin, Stephanie, mm-hmm. she's still there. Yes. And her twin flame is um now a trans man. Mm-hmm. So she went into a started out a gay relationship and it was like she didn't even care. But you know what? If you go on their website and you look at the pictures of a lot of these people, they look miserable. Absolutely yeah. miserable. They sure do. Love. Uh, even some of, the, not some, a lot of the video of not the post, the interviews of, you know, them talking about it after it's happening. Mm-hmm. The videos of them while it's happening, a lot of them do not look happy no. or certain at all of what's going on here. Not at all. And how, you know, and they themselves will say, I don't know why I couldn't just see this or yeah. say no. That's the saddest part is for a lot of people, when you're in a cult type environment like that, you don't see it. Mm. But Jeff started becoming more and more aggressive. And he started actually with that girl. I can't remember what her name was, but the one that was that went to jail. Yes. He actually called her an effing liar. On the Zoom class, Mm -hmm. like in front of everybody. Yep. These classes, because they were on Zoom, are recorded. And when you record it, Mm -hmm. it goes out to the people that were in the class. So these are still available. They added these into the series, which Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, where'd they get these? Well, there you go. All of this stuff, all of this is documented, Mm -hmm. showing him becoming more and more aggressive. And when he says stuff like that, and then Shalia starts to look really unhappy and sickly and just absolutely miserable. And he starts talking mean to her. No, there was one point where he On said Zoom something in front of yep. everybody. He was talking and and she said something to correct him and he like told her to pipe down or something. He was like Stop talking. Yeah, stop talking. And he even said you're still talking. Yeah. Well, I asked you not to or something like that. Yeah. I was like, "Whoa." Yeah. Like, wow, in front of all these people. Yeah. It's one thing if you're doing that behind closed doors, but if you're doing that on a Zoom meeting, then how bad is it behind closed doors? That's what I really started thinking. I spent a lot of time watching that show, but because Shalia progressively gets quieter as time goes on. Mm -hmm. It's this weird, I hate to say it, but it's like Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Yeah, right. Except this Tammy is a lot more quieter. Mm-hmm. But the makeup is getting heavier and the look is weirder. Yeah. Um, but I would pay attention to her mm-hmm. while he's going off. Yes. And her expressions <laughs> say it all. They do. I mean, she, she you cannot hide what this girl is going through. Mm-mm. But she's just going along with it because she's got a ton of money. And she likes the Chanel Mm -hmm. and the Gucci and the Porsches. And they're not shy about doing videos about that, too. Not at all. And sharing the wealth of what they've achieved. Yep. Um, So very, um, God, I don't know what the word to put, how to say it, but uh, not afraid. No. At all. No. He seems to have no fear. And the thing is, is like, like one thing that I kept thinking during that whole show, and I'm assuming that this is an intuitive feeling because it kept coming to me is this is going to one day end yes, and it's going to be really, really ugly for him. Oh yes, it will. And when it does, I'm going to be very happy because Mm -hmm. this is still going on. And if you go to their website, you'll see they have their trainers and all their trainers pictures are up there and there's a whole bunch of them. And there's several couples that are, trans that they've made transition completely there's a lot of trans men that you know women that have transitioned to men it's amazing to go through there and be like wow yeah wow and some of these couples are so ridiculously matched it's like way off wow way off i just i don't understand and this jeff and shalia just had their first child (laughs) Uh, oh, you're like, oh, man, you brought a kid into this thing? Ay, ay, ay. This well, yeah. Is be, this is not going to be good. And during the series, they they actually lost a child. Yeah. But when they announced that they were pregnant and that this was going to be, I can't remember exactly how they put it. I might have it in my notes here somewhere. This about, child, I can't remember what they called it, but was essentially like the next Virgin Mary. This child was never going to have 
yeah. contact or any kind of sexual relation mm-hmm. with they were going to be um, like a purist, mm-hmm. I think, or something. I think he they... had this deter- predetermined for his child. Oh, yeah. I think he called it like a third flame or something like that or whatever. But this baby was going to be the missing link to them. So then she miscarries and I'm like, whew, thank God. <laughs> but then come to find out they do have a baby now. Yeah. Yeah. I think they named her Grace. And yeah, she's, she's, uh, wow. I'm really hoping. She's in for a ride. I'm really hoping that this gets broken up or dealt with before that child is too old and has a lot of damage. That's what I was hoping to. But she's already like uh, a couple years old. So um, I found myself wondering, you know, not only, I, I, as I said it early on in this, when we started talking about this, that I was wondering how much of this was premeditated. Mm-hmm. Like, because this guy was the type of guy, he's looking for the next cash cow. Mm-hmm. Well, how can he make a dollar and quickly? Yeah. I also found myself, t- and I was talking to you about this, like, what is what is getting this guy's rocks off here? Right. I can't quite figure it out. Mm-hmm. Like, is it just simply the control, right. you know, like, of your congregation? Because he's embodying a couple different things here, as far as I'm seeing outwardly, like, and objectively, is like, he's reminding me a lot of Church and Scientology. Yes. And he's reminding me a lot of David Koresh. Yes. He is, like, embodying both. Yeah. And so I kind of go, did this guy sit back and, like, right. study these people and kind of follow them and right. get interested in their story to see how he could maybe do it better than them right and not get in trouble or you know what i mean not yeah. have a bla- a backlash right um but i kept going back to what's getting him off though right is watching people change their gender and that kind of control right um like wow right that to me i he's spending a lot of time with these people like in meetings mm-hmm. one on one Talking to them, too. That's what you have to understand is that they're in Michigan, and a lot of these people are not in Michigan. Right. There are other places in the country. So he's doing a lot of Zoom meetings. Yes. And you can get a sense very quickly of the wackiness that he's sharing with these people. Yeah. Absolutely. I... I started thinking about all of that, too, like like what's, what's getting him off on this, right? And I think... Probably a lot of it is the money, a lot of it, because going back to what we were talking about before about how they then turned it into your your twin flame is here. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're not finding your twin flame because there's not enough boy girl couples, what's the next move? And would leave to go elsewhere. Exactly. So the next move is this is is doing this gender reassignment. And um, so to me, I I, I don't know. I feel like he's he's doing it mostly for the money. Real quick, too, before I I know we're kind of bouncing back and forth because this popped in my head also before he said that the twin flames were within the group when he initially said your twin flames could be anywhere in the world. He had people, members from throughout the world Mm. that were taking classes. Yes. He had people moving across the country to move in with their twin flame that they had never met. Mm -hmm. They had only seen on Zoom. Yep. You know what I mean? That's the kind of mind control that somebody's moving to Sweden like yeah. from the United States and you've never been out of the state you live in most yeah. likely like what the? this mind control is absolutely wild oh wild wow. so when I looked it up to see if they were still doing this after we watched it um, one of the things that I found is is when I looked up is they if they still exist is the group is still active in recruiting new members former member Keely Griffin revealed that Jeff aimed to evade taxes uh, and his tax earning leading to the creation of the church of union. Yes. Um, so basically what he did after that is now he's established the group's first physical location in Michigan. And he's asked followers to reside in trailers on the premises and assist with renovating the facility. Additionally, he's asked members that to start families with their twin flames 
um, and their children will be referred to as golden children. Yeah. Hmm. So they're trying to build a community. Right. A cult. A cult. Yeah, it really is. It's like a multi-level marketing cult. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. And I feel really sorry for all of the people that are in this because you know that there's some people that are probably still in this because like, like Stephanie, for example, the twin, right. she is so deep into this that she's yeah. now married to a trans man. Mm -hmm. So if she were to say, this is all wrong, she now has to admit to the fact that I think she's the one that moved. What, no, maybe it wasn't her that moved to Sweden, but. I, I know that she did a lot. She's yeah, done a she, lot for them. She, has. She, they, she then has to admit that she was wrong, mm. which is hard for people to do, right? So a lot of times people just stay in the same situation because they don't want to admit They're that they were wrong. Them, yeah. yeah. So how long is she going to live in this situation and be miserable because she doesn't want to actually say, I was wrong? Yeah. That's ego. Yeah. And it's really sad. Yeah. That people are, are allowing their ego to control them, but also to allow another human being to control them the way that they are this Jeff guy. Right. It's amazing. Like there were parts of the show where Jeff and Shalia are sitting there together talking bad about the person that they're talking to. Like, I can't believe that she's, you know, acting like this. And she's, I know. It just saying like horrible parents. things. It's really strange. Like mean parents. I kind of wonder what Jeff's story is. What what is where right? does his trauma come from? Yeah. Exactly. Right? Like, because he's got a monster inside of him. And mm -hmm. so you're like, what happened to you, man? Yeah. You know, um, everybody wants to a place to feel welcome. Yeah. Everybody wants to be loved. Yes. Um, everybody wants to fit in. I, I think that's true. Mm -hmm. I think that's true about, I would say, 99.9% .9 of us. Yeah. <clears throat> there are many of us that are fine with being loners don't care. Right. Doesn't, but that means they just don't mind being alone. Doesn't mean you don't want to be loved. Right. And accepted, you know, for totally, who you yeah. are. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, we are in a day and age where we've seen this happen now over and over again. People getting totally brainwashed. Mm -hmm. um, this guy literally guarantees it in writing. That's another thing, yeah. On their pages, mm -hmm. okay, that he's going to find you your twin flame, the love of your life. Yeah. Uh, making claims like you're Jesus because you just happen to look like a <laughs> painting <laughs> of somebody that does not resemble yeah. that person at all. Yeah. And for any of us to assume we know yeah. what that person looks like, that's just pure ignorance. Yeah. A lot of people could sit back and look at what we do and go, well, that's the same thing. No. Well, no, it's not. No, it's not. Not at all. We are, first of all, we don't have an idol where it's not a religion. No. We don't We don't believe in that what, uh, whatsoever. Mm -mm. We don't charge a darn thing. No. Uh, Samantha is a medium and a psychic and an animal communicator by trade. That's her living. Yeah. That's what she does. Right. Okay. I am a painter and a musician. Yeah. And, and photographer that's what i do yep. we sit here one hour a week um and we do this for free we don't ask for a yeah. darn thing yeah we do it because we like to do it yes we do it because there are people that we have helped that have shared okay. that with us Lots, and yes. that feels good it does okay that yep. that i think feels great mm -hmm. we make no guarantees no we charge nothing no and we have no idols that you have to worship. Right. So if for some reason someone might feel that way, I'm simply stating that to give you a different perspective. Right. Um, or maybe somebody's told you something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There's a big difference is what I'm saying. Yes. Love and seeking love makes people vulnerable. Yes. Uh, I've worked on a couple of platforms, online platforms, like Paper Minute, Psychic Stuff, and I'm telling you, 99% of those are love readings. Yeah. And most of the people will hang up on you if you don't tell them what they want to hear. Right. So the people that are just looking to make money and not help people will tell you whatever you want to hear. Right, because they don't want to have bad stars or bad reviews. Right. 
See, it's a perpetuating thing. That's exactly right. Where it really should be, at least this is the way I look at it as a light worker, is that the spiritual people guiding you in the right direction to help you find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to go through the wrong things to get to where you need to go. And if you're going to tell people you only have one twin flame and we're going to find that person for you and they're right here, you're not giving yourself the opportunity to actually find what it is that you're supposed to have because you're letting somebody else dictate your life and if it's a situation there you're feeling like they're you know whoever this is that you might be involved with if you stumble across something like this that you feel like they're trying to put a separation or a divide between you and your actual family Mm -hmm. um there's something wrong with that they want to cut you off from communication now there's probably a lot of people in here that have every right to cut off communication with their family yeah but you make that choice. Exactly. Don't let somebody else make that choice, right? No. Um, because a couple of these mothers that they interview in this, it's it's really heartbreaking, man. It really is. And it's it's not just that. Like the girl, Angie, I felt really bad for her because it, it, she must have felt like she's never going to find true love. Because it's like everybody that they've said is your twin flame has turned out to be like, no, uh, uh-uh, sorry, I'm out of here. Uh, and so that's got to yeah. be very discouraging to her and disheartening. Yeah. Love is confusing. And I do talk to a lot of people, especially women, that are like, I want to be with one person for the rest of my life and that's it. But the thing is, is that A lot of times that's not what we're here for because we're here to learn from each other. We're here to grow with each other. And like, like my first marriage and your first marriage, we were both really young. Yeah. Um, I was 22 when I was married the first time. And if somebody would have said to me, this is the person you have to stay with forever. I'd be miserable right now because life wasn't going anywhere. You know, we have to learn different things. And sometimes that means that we have to experience different people. Yeah. Those people are our soulmates. They are. My yeah. ex-husband is a soulmate. Your ex-wife is a soulmate. No matter how much we, we might want to not believe that or be right. like, Ugh, no, that is the truth. Because these people are put here for us to learn from and with and grow with. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to finding love, Rushing into it is probably a horrible decision, feeling like you have to find it right now. Like that bad review that I was talking about, about the one that said she wants to find it next month. (laughs) She had never dated anybody. Anybody. Right. She said, I want to date. I want to marry the first person that I date. And the bad review was about um, I'm not going to differentiate from that. Mm. I mean. There is a lot of souls in the astral realm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, There are a lot of lessons to learn Mm -hmm. for a soul. And I can't help but feel like I believe every one of us have to spend a life alone. Yes. That we don't have a spouse or a partner. Yeah. That is a part of a lesson That we will all experience, whether you remember it or you don't. It is something I believe every one of us have to experience. So at any given moment, at any particular time on the globe, yes, there's probably going to be some people that don't ever find love. Right, for sure. And that's unfortunately sad, but it's also kind of what we talked about earlier, was predetermined Mm -hmm. that that was the lesson to learn. Yes. When they came into this life, this was going to be the big, there's a lot of lessons, but this was going to be like the big thing. Right. That they came into life to learn was, I got to learn how to like love myself Mm -hmm. and be okay with myself before I can start giving that to somebody else. Yes. I had a very close friend of mine that died um, not that long ago of a heart attack and he never, ever, ever had a girlfriend. So sad. Yeah. He died a virgin yeah. at 50 something years old. Unbelievable. And he never, not just a virgin, but he never had a girlfriend. Wow. And so 
it was interesting seeing him for the last time before he passed. So that was like right at the beginning of my separation, like 2012. And prior to that, I hadn't seen him since like 1989 yeah. or 90. Yeah. Um, so he was very much still like high school um, then, the last time I'd seen him up until then 12, 2012, right. seeing him again, I expected there to be a significant difference right. in him. And there wasn't. Mm. I felt like I was sitting with that high school guy again. Yeah. Still talking about, I'm so nervous about to walk up and make conversation with this, mm. you know, this girl or something. And you're like, I don't, I can't do it for you. Right. You totally. know, as much as I would love to yeah. and help you, it's something we all have to learn, man. Yep. You know? Yep. I I think that we don't want a lot of people don't want to focus on that, that we are here to learn. And that is a big part of this. And it's like, if you just want something to be dropped in your lap, well, it's not going to work like that. You know, you have to put the work in, whether it's in yourself or in a relationship or whatever. And relationships are not easy. And that's another one I get all the time is um, I I actually was doing a live the other day and I had about five women in there ask me, "Um, can I find happiness in my marriage? Mm. And it's like, well, you can, but you have to make it happen. Like, mm-hmm. it's not just kind of come and fall in your lap. And I think with Jeff and Shalia, for a lot of people, this was an easy solution. It was, here's the person, figure it out. Mm-hmm. But then what? Right. Because if you're not meant to be together, mm-hmm. like in a couple of these cases where the people were running, don't chase after them. Mm-hmm. Like, if somebody is really running from you, like, really, like, to the point where they get a restraining order against you, right. why would you want to be with that person? Why would you want to push that? Because <laughs> you think that you can change their mind. You know, I'll become the person that they want to be so that I'm not alone. No, there's somebody else out there for you, but you're chasing the wrong person. Yeah. But we don't think like this. Love is its something that blinds a lot of people. A lot. I've been there. I understand. Uh, yeah. That when you're lonely and, you know, your heart's broken or whatever, you want to feel better and... and but it's not how life works and no relationship is perfect all the time either. And so being made all these promises of, you know, the perfect union or I can't remember exactly the way they worded it, but it's like, see, I'm thinking like this Angie lady, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. In this stocky series, you know, she's a heavy set woman. She's older. She's not, you know, she's not a calendar girl, but she's not like the elephant man. No, no. And, what she realized, and I'm I'm happy for her, is like, if you're getting the same results, then maybe try something different. Try something different, different yes. Um, and you tried being a woman and getting, you know, matched up with somebody, and then you tried being a man and getting matched mm-hmm. up with somebody, and now she's back to being a woman, which is great. I think she's much better that way. Yes. <laughs> but this is somebody that you're like, man, go on, go on Match.com. Totally. Go on Plenty of Fish, dude. They're, I mean, why are you limiting yourself yeah. to one little cult <laughs> yeah it. um because we're you're gonna take a chance at anything mm-hmm. you know trying to meet somebody on match as opposed to through some group like this right you're still going to have to take risks absolutely and that's it, just how it is yep and you're gonna get hurt yep and then you're not gonna get hurt sometimes so yeah but like you said i think relationships you know even like my friend I was talking about, oh, that's all I want. want. But then you see them, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm now sitting there across the table from him going, I'm going through my first divorce. Yeah. Do you really understand what relationships are? Yeah, right, exactly. Like how complicated it really can get. It's not about, man, I hope she wears the outfit that I love the, the best right. or does her hair like this or, you know, like he's still in that infatuation. Totally fantasy kind of place and i'm like no no let's put all that aside yeah (laughs) because after you've woken up to each other a few times in the morning the bliss yes subsides okay a little bit now even with you and i we have issues we have yeah we have problems sometimes that we have to work through absolutely we have to talk sometimes we argue yeah but we try to find resolution absolutely to what it is that's got us in that position to begin with Mm -hmm. We're also coming from places where we've been in those kind of places that we're talking about right now earlier in our life. Yes. So we're 
we've advanced. We've grown. Yeah. We know there's things we don't want to sit around and waste time with, and we know there's things we're definitely willing to invest time in. Yes. So, but for a lot of people, you know, that are searching for love, and this is a huge thing. Like you said, it's the biggest thing of your for your work is um, sometimes you've got to let it find you. Yes. And that we can make ourselves ill and kind of a little bit obsessive. Oh, yeah. And crazy by these type of people that you get or around the world that's like, yeah. I, I can't wait another month. Right. Well, what are you saying then? Right. Are you threatening to kill yourself? I don't. What are you saying? Right. Because yeah. if you can't wait, it, if you say that, you know what the universe is going to do? Yeah, it's going to make you wait. Yep. Mm-hmm. Another month. Yep. If not longer. Absolutely. So the minute you're just like. Going about your biz. Yep. And not making that a priority. Yep. And consuming your every thought Mm -hmm. is when the change occurs. You know, that's what happened with me when you really Mm -hmm. is that I actually said after dating this guy that I was chasing, 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 chasing. And I and then I found out that he had not just a girlfriend, but another woman that he was seeing. So there were three of us. I went, that's it. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And I stopped dating for like six months. And then my friends were like, when are you going to start dating again? I was like, you know, (laughs) and the way that it aligned, that was when we met. And but it was those six months that I had to myself that I really learned about myself. And I did. I let it go. And I said, you know what? Whatever the universe is going to bring me is what it's going to bring me. And I'm not going to push it and I'm not going to chase anymore. And that once I let go, that's when that happened. And it just, it just happened. You know, I didn't search for you. You were just there one day on plenty of fish, <laughs> which I guess is kind of a search, but we knew each other already. Yeah, that's funny. It really. And it's like, I try to explain to people when I do love readings that you have to look at how the timeline needs to be lined up Yeah. because I got divorced a little bit before you did. Yeah. And we both needed to go through our own thing before we could meet up and be together. Yeah. So if I would have forced myself to be with that person that I was dating before you, then that would have ended right there. Our timelines might have not have matched up. So you just you have to be patient and right. allow for this to come into your life the way it's supposed to. And do you have to get out there and put yourself out there? Absolutely you do. You have to, you know, it, it, just, it happens for some people where you're walking down the street and run into each other and, you know, the love and you never right. leave each other's side. Right. But for most people, that's not how it works. You have to no. go and meet the wrong people so that you meet the right people mm-hmm. or whatever it is. But it is a process and it is hard. And, and I think that if more people understood that this is what life is about, it's not about getting the things that you want with instant gratification yeah. that and, and just took the time to really uh-huh. find these things that we'd all be in happier places. And everybody's story is a little different. So yeah. like you watch these love movies and, rom- you know, romance movies and you get your hopes set up that your story is going to be something similar. Yeah. And um, it's not to say it can't be. Don't expect that. Right, exactly. Because that's just setting yourself up for disappointment. Right. I try to think about the stories of like the people that you see that are, uh, I've seen whatever, interviewed or wherever, that are like, oh, the first time we dated, we didn't really even like each other. Right. And then they fell in love. That's the kind of stuff that you're like, okay. Right. That's a good story. Yeah. You know, um, because it's not your typical kind of, like you said, Meeting at the newsstand by <laughs> yeah. the subway station. Yeah, which how often does that happen? Not you know, that not a often, lot. You know. Yeah, and if it does, does it really go on to be a fulfilling lifelong relationship, or right. is it just a one night stand? You know, because that's something totally different. But absolutely, I think we forget about that part too. It's like even with these people in this in this in this cult. They're just looking for love and they want this right now, this instant gratification. But do you ever stop and think about what 10 years from now is going to be like and when things are real? Yeah. Because that honeymoon phase doesn't last very long and then things get real. Well, I would just like to publicly say to Jeff and Aaliyah, you're both, excuse me, Shalia, Aaliyah. um, You're both totally full of crap. You're batshit crazy. Um, You're messing with people's lives. Yep. 
um, stealing mines their money. and stealing their money. Yep. Jeff, um, you might look like a painting of somebody, but <laughs> you do not resemble who that person is or embody yeah. what that person was at all. You actually, I hate to say this, you need a good butt kicking. Oh, you yes. really do because oh, I've yes. seen this thing. I've seen the way you've talked to other people yep. and your wife. Mm-hmm. God, I help your child, mm. but you guys are totally full of crap. Mm-hmm. Shalia, you're you're what makes um, you give the the psychic and medium yeah. world a bad name. Yes, you're full of crap as far as channeling and getting messages. <laughs> About who should be with who. Yeah, the universe would never do that. Your own relationship is barely alive. Yeah. So maybe go to some counseling for that. Yeah. And maybe tell the counselor how he rapes you Mm -hmm. and tells you to shut up live and not speak. You know, these these are the kind of things that are red flags for me. Yes. Uh, They would be red flags for me if I was a member of the group watching the leaders carry on this way. Yeah. Um, so if any of you people are listening to this, take a deeper, closer look at the person that you're following. Right. Oh, God, yeah. Because there's something severely wrong. Yeah. And the amount of money that he's taking for you to not really do you any good. No. But more so kind of ruin your life forever. Yeah. You might want to take a second look at that. Yeah, but it's – um, I don't believe in twin flames. No. And that's something that what do they teach and preach – and their Zoom lessons and sermons in this area is so great. I had a, um, I had a whole gender change, and so <laughs> did my spouse. And then they got hit by a car and died. Yeah. What do I do now? Yeah. My twin flame is dead. What happens? Right. It's a bunch of baloney. It's ridiculous. You are going to have to take a risk, open your heart, and be honest with whomever you decide to have a relationship with. Yeah. That's the only thing that's going to make a relationship. Is there more than one person that's meant for you that's a good fit for you in the world? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There's more than one. There's many. Yeah. Because death can happen at any time. Mm-hmm. So why should somebody be robbed of that? I've, I've seen um, you share with me about people that have been married for 50, 60 years and they die and the person left alive – is, you know, feeling guilty about moving on yeah. and having a relationship with someone else. That's not what their spouse no. is stealing from the other side. They're no. saying, you still have life and experience left in you. Yep. Do it. Do it. Yep. Be we loved. can be together yep. when you get here. Exactly. And we'll all be together. Yep. Right. That's what it's about. Yep. Yep. So we all ha- deserve the chance to do it and will we all get it in the same time no but we're going to do this many times right so one life you may never have anybody and the next life you might be the most handsome looking thing in the world and can't shake them off <laughs> right and then that's the curse yeah absolutely See? so be careful what you pray for <laughs> yes because you're going to experience it all yes and on all different kinds of levels absolutely so but i just wanted to be kind of clear on our stance as a don't buy it. No. I'm not really into that. No. We have done an episode about that in the past. I yeah, don't remember like the number. it was like 58 or something. We talked about it a little right. bit. Yeah, it was a long time but ago. It was a long time ago. But again, not. I don't really buy it. No. Um, so and that's a yeah, terrible but, selling point, yeah. you know, about this p- whole thing and what happens if that person that you've struggled and strived so hard to achieve to get, something happens to them. Yeah. They maybe leave you or they die or they get an illness and die or... Right. Whatever, you know, mm-hmm. maybe they get drafted to war. You got to go die, you know, for yeah. your country. Yeah. So it just doesn't, it leaves a big question mark for me about a lot of things. And I think that I feel really sad um, for the people that are involved and that have been affected. Me too. I'm happy for the ones that saw what was going on and got out of there. Some of them have, their lives have pretty much been ruined. Yeah. The Keely girl, I felt bad for her, but she sounds like she was a raging, you know, beep uh, when she was doing the henchman work for this couple um, that owned it. So She was only thinking about herself. And you have to learn. But I I kind of felt like her life's going to get better. It's going to get better. Yeah. Because she's seen the, she's seen what she did wrong. She's going to these people and apologizing uh, her sister won't talk to her, the one that she yeah. brought into the group. But maybe that'll change. Yeah. 
I see her life getting better. It's just going to feel really dark and lonely oh, for, sure. for a while. You can get past anything. But, it just but takes time. it'll get better. Yeah. And it'll just be a learning experience. So yeah. I'm happy that she was um, compassionate enough to admit that. Yes. And show these people that, no, you're right. This place is wrong and bad. And yep. I was leading everybody down yep. a wrong path. I definitely think that if you, for our listeners, if you haven't seen this series yet, it's worth watching. Yeah. It's entertaining. It's also educational in certain ways of how not to be, (laughs) you know, how not to allow people to treat you. If you ever have a spiritual mentor, guide, guru, shaman, anybody that treats you in any kind of negative way, that is not the person for you because- As a light worker, the universe really works with with me and I'm sure with other light workers on how to properly treat people yeah. and how not to talk to them and I would never ever ever call somebody an effing liar to their face even if I thought that that was the truth. Right. I would never do that. I would never you know, most spiritual people will not do that. That's not what we're here for. We're here to help and yeah. and to guide and to be supportive, not to make you feel bad and stupid and and make you give us more money at all. That's another really big red flag. You mm-hmm. shouldn't have to pay for to find love unless it's on a dating site. Yeah. Which really you don't even need that either cuz we found each other on a free dating site. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it can happen. It absolutely can. So, yeah, we should. We'll have a watch. Yeah. Share in the the comments what you think if you haven't seen it. Um, But we we just felt really compelled and thought it was worth an episode. Absolutely. Yeah. Beware of those kind of people. Please. Yeah. Well, that was cool. Yeah, it was. We didn't know if we'd have enough to talk about, but look Uh, at us. Of course. Well, before we say goodbye, would you share your information one more time? Sure. You can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com, or I also have an Etsy that's Beyond the Bridge 11, where you can find $20 specialty readings. Whoa. Yay. Very cool. And then for you, sir. Yes, djonesartcollection.com for the web, at djonesartcollection for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and for my photography. Instagram is djones71photography, and my Etsy shop is djonesphotography 71 and that's it for us. Fabulous. We hope you guys got something out of this. That we do. If you haven't watched it, check it out. Let us know what you thought. Yeah. Have a great week. Yeah. And until next week, peace and love. love.